Welcome back to the GG Over Easy podcast. Back with the boys once again. Here is Mr. Fruit. I'm Blue Westlow. Mm -hmm. And the prodigal son has returned. The Robbie V. Back from his Hatsune Miku Con. He loved it. <laughs> he was huge on it. And dare I say, he has come back more kawaii than ever. Rob went to a really cool CSGO major. Or yeah, the CSGO major. Uh, <laughs> oh god <laughs> and he tells us all about how he was a karen not only in germany uh wait fuck denmark nah, yeah, you, we, no they learn nah, nah, they we'll learn geography know. a little bit uh comment section i, still don't know where I apologize <laughs> like if i told you put denmark <laughs> on a map you can go yeah. to denmark i know you went there i still don't know where it is <laughs> <laughs> Might as well be um, Narnia. Like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Rob tells all about his journey in Denmark. We know where Copenhagen is, guys. All right. Now. Now. Yeah. He I didn't before. It. I go into detail about my medical uh, emergency that brought me to the ER, which I don't normally do. Yeah. It, those enjoys of Rob's stories you're eating today. It's hey. So and he and if you love passive aggressive rob that goes in on people oh, this, this is... is your podcast rob lets it rip uh He's on something and else i do it for then... you guys i do it for, I do it for you he, guys. he he goes out in public 21 to look for these moments to enact for us so oh, in my notes podcast or... say thank you rob Great in the podcast, comments man. Because this dude, yeah, he he writes. He's got improv notes on his i like on his his phone, just ready to go. Like so this is I this is a situation him about what you talked about, but something that happened when he was gone. And he goes, "Oh, dude, it's gonna be a great podcast story." <laughs> <laughs> and then and that's what we get about. into some we get into some Q and A. So uh, if you guys like all that, listen to the boys talk about a whole lot of IRL stuff this week then stick around this episode of the gg over easy podcast is sponsored by our gg over easy legends green pete one lax feels halcyonics and hoth if you guys want to go extra and beyond the support of just watching the podcast please think about subscribing to our patreon it helps out a ton smoking cannabis it doesn't have to hurt upgrade to a freeze pipe today and experience smoother clouds without the throat burn chest pain or coughing attacks Freeze Pipe makes a unique line of freezable pipes, bubblers, bongs, and more. That cool smoke by over 300 degrees. Every piece is made of thick glass and creates clouds so cold, you'll check if the bowl is even lit. The secret is the freezable glycerin chambers that come on every piece. Pop one of them into the freezer for one hour, and as smoke passes through, it's instantly chilled for a relaxing experience without the afterburn or coughing. You guys know that I enjoy my smoking. You may be asking yourself, what if I like to smoke joints like myself? They even make a smokable joint piece that instantly makes your joints cooler and smoother. It's literally the best. I can't even think about smoking a joint without it. American owned and with over 100,000 happy customers, Freeze Pipe is your solution to smoke like royalty without having to pay a king's ransom. Shop now at freezepipe.com and use the code GG for 10% off your entire order. That's thefreezepipe.com and code GG for 10% off. Order today to get free shipping and say goodbye to harsh smoke forever. This episode of the GG Over Easy podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and making it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. That was one of the things they harped on with me during my time with BetterHelp is doing more things that give me more enjoyment. You know, in the content space, you know, you can really stress about, you know, analytics and numbers and viewership and all that kind of stuff. Separating that was kind of hard for me. Um, and I learned through BetterHelp that, you know, unplugging the cord um, when I'm done streaming and hanging out with Sydney and the cats is something that I have to make a priority or else I'll literally just fixate on numbers and stats all the time. BetterHelp is entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Learn to make more time that makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash GG today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash GG. Thank you, BetterHelp, for sponsoring this podcast. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the GG Over Easy Podcast, episode 223. And I am so glad to say that back from the dead, he ain't gone. He ain't here no more. Literally, seemingly from the dead. It's been you gone. The one, the only. I don't think I've ever been gone that long. It's been. It's good to be back. You know, get back in the podcast form. Uh, I do sound a little sick. Uh, once again, I have the. What's the immune system? That's the word. Uh, I have the immune system of something that doesn't have a good immune system. So, <laughs> ah, um, you've got well the put. you got the big dick itis. I feel that one. I think that's what they call it. Yeah. Um. um well, be back, you know, though. it's yeah. How was Germany? Yeah. Oh. So I, I so I listened to a little bit of the podcast uh, uh, when man. you guys uploaded it uh, on my big long travel day, and I was like, ah, let's yeah. see what the comments are saying. Like, I want to see like, oh, we miss Rob. Like, oh, this the is like one is like these idiots. Yeah. <laughs> someone was like, I think it was like, who's gonna tell them that Copenhagen is not in Germany? Which you know, I, I will I say, Copenhagen does sound like a very German name. You know, I think that's like what, when I first heard that the major was in Copenhagen. I had to ask what country is that in. Um, so we'll see, uh, I learned that learned it is Denmark. I I'm not embarrassed because my knowledge, I have made it if there is one subject that I'm probably the worst at, it's geography. And yeah. that's the truth. And I'll own that. That's my I bad. Actually, I don't know. I, I actually excel pretty you know? well in, in geography. Like if I told you guys I was going to I Budapest, know. what country is that? India. No. Really? Oh, no. no. <laughs> really? <laughs> to, uh, to, um, I'm pretty uh, sure I know this one. I'm gonna make sure that, like, I know this um, one before you know I expose myself. Uh, oh fuck! Uh, Pat. No, wait. Buda. <laughs> oh wait, I remember this one. No, no, no. Okay, I actually remember this one because um, it's near Bratislava, which is um, remember that um, remember that meme song? Uh, it was like um. Your repertoire of meme songs is much bigger than mine. The it, that was the it was like the biggest <laughs> me, no it was the biggest meme song of last year. Um, I'm uh, still in like 2019. Uh, yeah. Women are my favorite guy. Sex. I'm wanting more. That one classic. So the full song he was like Bratislava. <laughs> let me hear you sing. And Bratislava is next to Budapest. Anyways, it's it's. I'm pretty sure it's Hungary. Yeah, and oh. I'll be honest with you, I thought it was Romania before I did it, so uh, <laughs> uh, it just kind of shows my knowledge as well. Well, I've seen people do like quizzes or stuff of like trying to like map out all the countries in like Europe or Asia or just like Southeast and stuff, and it's like they're naming countries first off, I didn't even know existed, and secondly, they're like, oh yeah, um, right there is like you know some like hungry and like see once we start what? getting to like i know italy st- or whatever it's a boot yeah. like the more west in europe we get and the less the, the less knowledge i understand that whole like little section is like my least understood geographically because like i'll hit you with like <sighs> i like it goes to like <laughs> netherlands and like anything past that yeah, I know the, the like top three up there is, is in some order. There's like Finland, Norway, and Finland. Another one, like Italy's <laughs> the exception. Sweden, Sweden. Italy's the exception, right. but anything east of that is um, limited, limited at best. I I know the, the UK, yeah, and I'm, Greenland, on, and Iceland. Okay, nice. That's pretty much it. We should do like a video of like you guys naming the you European really like. <laughs> like a I just Geo named. I video. just did it. I did it. I, <laughs> and people um, are like, "Oh, typical American." No, don't worry, bro. I can't pick out the states. It's not. It's not limited to. Uh, I can probably name all the states more or less. I'm, I used like to be able to name the capitals, positions. but that has since left my my knowledge. For some reason, in fifth grade, they like teach you that and like like quiz you on it as if like. That is some sort of important information. The only way I remember the, all the names is I probably forgot the song, but there was an old song. It was like Alabama, Alabama. Alaska, Alaska, Alaska Arizona, Arizona, Arkansas, 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 Arkansas California, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, and in, in Illinois, Indiana, Iowa. Don't you know? You would like you probably like to think you could name all fifty. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, went to uh, Europe for the first time. Uh, I've never been. Uh, so, you know, I had to get like the neck pillow and uh, the eye cover. Uh, none of it helped. Um, and apparently I was wearing it wrong. I didn't know that. Apparently, like you're supposed to flip it upside down. So like the shoulder, like the little things like fit over your shoulders. I thought like the little down part was for like your chin or like your cheek. Um... But apparently that's for like your shoulder. I mean, fundamentally, um, it works the same. You're, yeah, I mean, because yeah. like my, whenever I sleep on the head, my head's going like ninety degrees. So, yeah, never been on a plane that long. I think uh, from Denver to Munich, we took off at five p.m. and landed in Munich at ten. Munich's in Germany. Correct. Bonus points. Um, and then maybe that's why you guys thought I was in Germany because you knew I was going to Munich first or something. Don't give me that much credit. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, the passport custom things, uh, I've heard a lot of horror stories. Like they really grill you and like, they really like, like what are you doing here? They um, make you nervous. Like, am I here for the right reasons? Wait, yeah. Uh, right. Like, well, one guy, like before we got on the plane, uh, to Munich, there was like, you know, a cop at the thing and he like, is let everybody else through. And then I get there. He goes, Pops. Oh my. he goes, where are you from? I was like, four. Fort Collins, and he goes, "What's your like purpose of your visit?" And I was like, uh, "I I'm going to Denmark for a video game tournament." And he goes, "Video game tournament?" And I went, "Yeah." And he goes, "Are you like making money or playing?" I was like, "I wish, like I wish I was that, like I." But then I was like, "No." And then he's like, "Do you have more than ten thousand dollars on you?" I was like, "Damn, I gotta like tip you too." Like, uh, but I was like, "No." Um, so. Uh, go on the flight, watch a lot of anime, okay? Uh, watch a lot of One up. Piece. Yep, caught up on some One Piece. Uh, finish like the f- what episode are you on? Well, finish like the first arc, whatever. Like finishing the first arc is like eighty. <laughs> oh, something. so like episode like four hundred? Yeah. Uh, watch. Uh, wa- finally caught up with solo leveling. Uh, solo leveling, very dope. Uh, I don't know if you guys have watched it yet. Very sick. I've watched the first uh, eight episodes. Okay, so you you got to where it like finally starts like taking mm-hmm. off, um, and then watched a little bit of Vinland Saga. Um, pretty I'm cool. Season one, but I'm close. I like that one. Yeah, I like Vinland a lot. Uh, banger intro, probably one of the best intros I've heard to an anime ever. Uh, and then watched. Uh, I, I gotta admit, I watched a dub of a show. Oh, uh, wrong. Yeah, I'm a, I was a dub watcher, but just because I heard the dub is kind of funnier. Um, it was, it's called Mashley. Don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. Um, it's almost kind of like Harry Potter, but the guy can't really use magic and is just strong. Okay. And that's really all it is. Pronounced Mashle. No, it's pronounced Mashley. Shut up. Um, <laughs> Got him. and then, um, I watched another one called like Motoku Tensei or something like that. It's about like this, like 40 year old dude who dies but then it's like in reincarnated and like so this real. different world of like magic and stuff. It's called an isekai. A what? An isekai? It's a genre. Oh, that's it's a genre? Really- like that's a normal genre? I thought this was very that's like a-, a unique take. No, that's a very, very common genre. Really? Or like sword arts. It's, it's sword it art online. just got added to the Oxford Dictionary. Konosuba. Um, it's just somebody like reincarnating or waking up or finding themselves in an alternate reality that's not real life but real life exists oh overlord and uh, yeah interesting there's a lot of these guys uh so yeah just um tried to sleep on the flight can't sleep on the flight so um at that point i'd been up for like 24 hours or something like that get to munich uh have about like an hour before uh my flight to copenhagen takes off and the Munich airport is the biggest airport I've ever seen. It has like Louis Vuitton stores, like Burberry stores. It's like who's like actually buying and like wine, like who's buying alcohol in the airport? Like I, like I do never understood that. Like uh, why? Who came out better from the world war? I mean, that's all <laughs> you, saying, you, you know, hate, know. Hey, you'd be surprised how much expendable income people have when they don't have to worry about basic human necessities. Well, I'll get to that. Um, so <laughs> I get to, we get to Denmark. 
and yay, we're in Denmark. Um, immediately like overwhelmed. There is a language that I don't understand. People aren't speaking English around me. I am out of my element. Now, like, I'm a very well-traveled person. You know, I've traveled around America a lot. Uh, never have traveled outside. Um, so um, a thing here, especially in Colorado, that I normally never take or have to take is public transport. Okay? And, like, let me get on the 2 train, and then I get on the 2B train, and then I'm all, like, okay, so immediately see that and like i'm in a group chat with a bunch of people that are from like england ireland scotland so i'm the dumb american so i try not to be the dumb american and in the thing they're just like oh take the metro it's way cheaper than a taxi i got a taxi immediately and just went like here is the ad- <laughs> here is the address i need to go to Good call. and they took us there um get to our hotel room some of the uh players are, are staying at our hotel room which is really cool mm. Uh, we actually ran into one of uh, our favorite players. Um, I mean, you guys are both in Discord. The Discord is called Zantara's Peak um, because Zantaris is a uh, he's from Turkey and he's really good at the game. And he when he plays online, he has really high ping or something like that. So he'll just wide swing you and then you get killed immediately before you even get a chance to react. And it's called Zantara's Peak. So we ran into him. I actually got a picture with him. It was very sick. I'll be like posting it like in the thing. So first day, um, we get there Thursday, but we didn't get Thursday tickets, which kind of sucked because it turned out Thursday had the best series uh, between FaZe and Spirit, which were like the two favorites to win. Um, And I was like in and out going out of sleep watching that. Um, It was really, really sick. But then Friday came and we had FOMO missing out on Thursday that we went on Friday. And it was really sick. Uh... I've never really been to a big esport like uh, tournament or anything like that, um, but being like there, like it was full on it, and it was like for the quarterfinals. And normally, like for quarterfinals, you'll see it like eh, a little bit empty here and there. Um, but that, I mean, that place was truly like full, and it was like it's really cool, just kind of like being there with other people that also enjoy the same thing, and like just kind of understanding like yeah we're a bunch of fucking nerds watching a video game like this is sick um because like you've been what to one christian with league uh been to i'm not gonna count overwatch league because like that was like well no i went to world finals uh spring finals semi-finals for world uh i think that's it like three or four different occasions yeah and it, it's all like it's genuinely like really cool like counter strike like really makes you feel like you're there for a cool reason like they gave us like these commemorative pins except they're not genuine pins if they were genuine pins it means it would come with a code on them and then you could redeem them in like steam and then on your like in the game it would show it but they didn't do that this year because they suck um mm. yeah um so friday um all right I have, okay, if you're from Denmark, okay, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, okay? You guys all have livable wages, so you guys get to do whatever you want. I get it. You're taxed a lot, but holy shit, everything is so expensive over there. It's, like, insane. Like, so expensive, um, which is, like, fine, like, whatever. Um, okay, but here's, like, where I have a really big issue, okay? Go to a restaurant, okay? Okay. I don't think I've had the like worst service in my entire life than I've had in Denmark. We would sit well, at they, a table. They don't get tipped. So. Well, that's what I mean. Like, so they don't, they don't give a fuck. So like, I just sit there for twenty fucking minutes <laughs> with an empty fucking drink. Like, just fill my fucking drink. Like, I don't get it. Like, you make it like I. Just, so okay. So like, I get it. Like, uh, people in America who like tip, like we like no, like we shouldn't rely on people like tipping. All right, but like you know what, maybe. You know, maybe this made me realize that maybe I like having my ass kissed while I'm here and having like service and stuff. And guess what? I'm gonna tip you a lot because guess what? I'm paying the same amount of money in crones or whatever that I would be paying if I tipped. But now I got shitty service and paid for shitty service where I would have paid the same amount if I had great service. Okay, that's my kind of my big gripe with just like the service I had at every. And this wasn't like an isolated incident. Okay, this was every like restaurant we went to. And then another problem, though, was 
everybody loves Jesus, okay? Everybody loves Jesus and it's Easter. So everything's fucking closed. Of course, like everything's closed. So no, so no, no like get to go to cool restaurants on the weekend because everyone is like worshiping God, which is like fine and shit. But like, come on, like let, let, let have some sort of restaurants open. Um, and then, uh, oh, okay. So another issue I had, then this was more so like, was just the timing of the tournament and stuff like that. So like the tournament would start at six and then you have two series you watch and there's like breaks in between. So you start at six and you end around like midnight, like it was pretty late. So by the time you get out, you're like, man, I'm fucking starving. I can't, I can't eat another hot dog sausage in like a little like tube of a bun. Now I will say those are fire. I don't know what they're called, <laughs> but it's like a hot dog in the tube. It's a, think about like a, a bun, but it's a tube almost kind of like this. Now put a hot dog in it. And this is like a bun. I have no idea. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, but you can only eat so many of those. So you get out of the you get out of the thing, and it's midnight. Well, uh, everything's closed except for a Burger King that's like right over there. So I don't think I ate more Burger King KFC uh, in my life than I did in Copenhagen. Um, and that is another issue I had. I don't know if you guys saw my tweet. Uh, the large fry in uh in denmark is something to be like i i couldn't i was bewildered okay so i'm starving okay we just got done like eating or like it's saturday night we just got like done drinking at like a bar and stuff and of course everything is closed other than a burger king so like well fuck it we'll get we'll have another burger king um <laughs> so in i order you know i get my normal whopper large combo large blah 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 blah, blah. Uh, so I like get my bag um, and I open it and it's literally just like, you know, when you get a small fry, it's just the little baggie. It's not like a, the cardboard kind of one. It's like the little baggie. And I like open. It, I went, I got large fry. And Benny went, that is the large fry. And I went, no, it's not. And then he went, yes, it is. And I went, I'm complaining. I literally walk up to the counter and I went, I ordered a large there. fry. And the guy like looks at me and he goes, that this is a large fry. And I went, no, it's not. This is not a large fry. And then he goes, I guess I'll give you more. So he like, I walked him like, <laughs> you dumbass. Like, I, I watch him walk over to the fries, grab like what another large fry is like, dump a little bit out and then like put it in my thing. And he's like, there you go. And I was like, thanks. And Benny's like, he for sure heard your American accent and was like, "Ah, oh, this is not worth it." You gotta be. I You're love how American. Rob. I love how Rob starts this conversation with, "I'm pretty well traveled." Goes to <laughs> European country. What the fuck what is this is fry? This? The fuck what? are you guys doing in this establishment? Well, I was like, no wonder everybody in Denmark is six foot and one eighty. <laughs> you know, like, um, an, an American learns what an actual healthy portion looks like. POV. For real though, I was like, I was like, I was pissed. I was like, it's not a large fry, and I was a little bit drunk at that point too. So like, you know, a little I was on my tings. Um, and then oh, and then Saturday, uh, that day, same day too. I think you guys all saw the clip. I ran into like, uh, uh, One Pixels. Like her name's Donna. She does like she like walks around the stage for One Pixel and stuff like that. So I got to talk to him and he remembered me. That was kind of funny. He actually bought my first inventory that allowed me and Sydney to buy this house. So big shouts out to my boy. Uh, and then, um, oh, okay. So, and then for the Saturday as well at the game, I keep bouncing around. The timeline's kind of crazy. Um, we're sitting in front of one of the pro players families. Okay. Uh, he plays for Navi. His name's Alexi B. I have never rooted harder on the downfall of a player in my life than I was in that moment. Uh, like, I, it was literally like them just chanting Alexi B. What, meanwhile, this brother is 4 and 13. Like, this brother <laughs> is stinking up the joint. Uh, and they're just going crazy. Alexi B. Alexi B. Navi. Like, just like the whole time, you know, like, let, let me just come on. And then, like, well, the worst part is, like, this was like. You. This is like half my like viewing experience when somebody gets a kill. 
like brother it's one two like to relax like save that for like when it's 11 11 or like 12 11 you know for the big rounds you know so it's like and then i'm not like at that point like i know you're the family so i know you're excited so i'm not gonna be like hey can you like get, get down like at this point it's like well this is where we pick the sit like this is this is what i get uh navi actually wins okay and navi was not uh-huh. expected to do like very well in the tournament very pretty dark horsey um Harrigan or whoever kind of choked but you know. uh-huh yeah, well, that oh, was kinda, brother yeah well so the grand finals rolls around oh oh wait 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 i'm totally missing out on something oh there right. are protesters <laughs> that ran onto the stage um and it was like making news like everywhere in the gaming world uh well even i w- saw it and i dm you're like what is happening <laughs> yeah so christian dms me and goes like hey just saw like protesters run on the stage that's crazy like what's going on and i was like they're basically like uh protesting like gambling and christian's like oh uh like they're protesting that like they don't want people to gamble their skins anymore and i'm like no actually quite the opposite <laughs> uh so basically uh g2 which is a team is sponsored by a website called csgo blank you know i'm not gonna promote a gambling website or anything csgo something okay and on this website you can deposit skins and like be like i think dobby's gonna win by two rounds let me put my dragon lore on it and if you win you get like other skins back or something like that so it's not like you're not winning money but you are winning money essentially and uh, another website called CSGO Blank doesn't like that CSGO Blank is sponsored by G2 and CSGO something uh, basically says that CSGO fill in the blank is exit scamming their customers and is like, we don't do that to our customers. So they r- paid people to run on the stage and protest CSGO Blank because they want them to gamble on CSGO something instead. And that, yeah, exactly. It's not even like, don't gamble there, gamble here because we don't exit scam. Wow. It was really, really yeah. Popega. It is. <laughs> and like the whole time, the guy that owns this website is streaming on Kick and is basically like, yeah, like, all right. He literally said this, like, all right, send the slaves onto the stage, basically. And then, like, three minutes later, they, like, rushed the stage. He also had, like, seven, like, Chinese women dancing behind him while this was going on. It was weird. Real Puff Daddy vibes, if you catch what I'm saying. It was weird. Uh, So, like, these dudes, like, rushed the stage. They, like, they, like, cut the feed. And, like, they rushed the players off the stage. Uh, in the in, like in the mayhem while they're tackling the dude, the trophy falls over and breaks like a little brittle thing. Like, um, so the next day, uh, I guess like one of those people for like CS:GO blank, uh, chained themselves to a fence, and the security just ended up picking up the fence and moving it away from the <laughs> venue. So funny, man! If you can find the clip, he's literally like. Chains himself into like a, a fence that's like near the arena and is like, ah, I'm protesting. And then they're like, they just like pick up the movable gate and just like move it off to the side. Um, but Sunday was really cool because it was FaZe Navi. Once again, FaZe pretty favorite, and Navi was kind of like a dark horse. And Navi ended up winning. Um, and like you said, yeah. Kerrigan did drop a stinker, and it sucks because he he was like the last Dane in the tournament. And it was in Denmark. Couldn't bring it home. Yeah, so they were really and like even I, especially from yesterday, happening to hear about Alexi B and Navi the whole time. I was, I was phase up, you know. <laughs> I was I was rooting on that family's downfall. I cannot lie. <laughs> um, but uh, they ended up winning, uh, which was really cool because I think like they showed a stat before and it was like the phase roster amount of trophies they had. They had like thirty or forty trophies like combined. Jesus. And I think with Navi, it was like two. And like some of them, like this was like their first like final that they were actually like playing in. Uh, so Good Navi ended up winning. Cool little dark horse kind of story. Um, didn't get my diamond coin. I got a silver coin, which is sad. Um, that's like a CSGO pick em thing that's like in the game. Um, 
So Sunday was cool, but then like, so I didn't tell you this. The morning Sunday, as you guys can tell, I'm a little sick. Uh, wake up Sunday, and it was just like GCX. Roof of the mouth dry. I already know. I already know it's over. Like, my destiny has been sealed. You are <laughs> sick, my friend. So I'm like, great. Um, so I woke up at Sunday around 10 o'clock. Um, and I didn't end up sleeping until Monday the next day when I landed in Denver. Because I was, like, so miserable. So, like, the tournament ends. And, like, it's starting to, like, get to me. I'm achy. I'm like, I can feel it in my throat now. I'm a little coffee. My my nose, it, this side is stuffed, and then this side comes to be stuffed, and then they're both stuffed, but then they're not stuffed anymore. Like, then that's like every 20 minutes. Um, I try and go to sleep. Benny says I slept for 25 minutes because I woke up in just a thing of sweat, and I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to sleep anymore. <laughs> uh, so oh, this part sucked. So I was going to get a taxi to the to the um, airport just because I didn't want to have to deal with the metro and all that kind of stuff. Because at that point, we had been riding it all weekend and we've learned how to do it and stuff. And, you know, I'll be honest. We didn't buy a metro ticket. I, I know you're supposed to buy. And like wow. Denmark, it's a very like honor system like there's no gates that stop you if you don't have a ticket it's basically like you're what's wrong beep. it's so why like, we in america can't have nice things like that mm -hmm. so <laughs> yeah so like the whole weekend we're riding the metro don't get like asked the shark tickets once or anything like that so i'm like okay like whatever this is chill so i get on uh the metro and like with my suitcase and everything you know i look very touristy like i'm heading back to the airport Look to my right as I'm walking in the subway. I see a metro worker walk in. I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm like, I, please don't like come over here. Please don't come over here. Uh, valid ticket. And he looks at me and I'm like, oh, shit. So, like, you know me. I, I, I'm smooth talking already. I'm like, oh, like, I got this uh, dot ticket here. Um, let me just, like, pull it up. And, like, I'm just, like, fumbling and stuff. And I just pull up, like, a random thing. And I go like this. He goes, that's not a ticket. And I go, all right, I didn't buy a ticket. Like, <laughs> so I could never. I'm dying from like just hearing that. If I yeah, were that the hardcore yeah. secondhand embarrassment right there. Yeah, so just, I'm like, I would, ah, like I didn't buy one. All right, you got me. Like, and he goes, all right, like, can you show me a form of ID? Show him the passport and stuff. So I get fined like 750 Danish crowns, which is like 80 bucks. So I'm like, fuck. So I'm like, already pissed. I'm sick, too. Like, at this point, I'm, bitch, I'm sick. Um, <laughs> so, ride the Metro. I would be pissed that I got caught. Yeah. And to get so, something for free. So, and then, like, he says, like, okay, so, like, this actually, like, accounts for your ticket, uh, like, on the thing. Like, if you get asked to show a ticket, like, this will be a valid ticket. Like, I, hope, I would fucking hope so. Like, I would hope so. Um. So, and then he gives me it, doesn't check anyone else, and then just gets off at the next stop. So, like, he was on the prowl. <laughs> so, uh, I get off on that train, get on my next train, and immediately get on that train. Uh, can you show me your ticket? I'm like, oh, Jesus fucking Christ. So, like, I pull out the, like, the fine that I got, and the guy just looks at me and goes, <laughs> like, just gives me a little, yeah, like, I'm like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, man. I know. And he's like looking over it over a while. I'm like, I swear to God, if that guy lied to me and I get like double fined, like I'm gonna be really pissed. Uh, thankfully, he's like, "All right, enjoy the rest of the ride." I'm like, "Yeah, go fuck yourself." Uh, and then uh, get to the airport. Uh, my flight's in Terminal Three. Okay, um, but I walk in, walk into the airport, and it says, "Welcome to Terminal 3. Okay, I don't see any gates. And the only things that I see are signs to Terminal 2. So. What's that about? Where's, where, where's Terminal 3? It says I'm in Terminal 3. So now, you know, I got to the airport kind of early, too. Because, like, I was like, what, am I going to just sit in my hotel all day? Like, let me just kind of go early. So I get lost, basically, because I don't know where Terminal 3 is. Because I am in Terminal 3. Um, so I'm like. Let me go ask for some help. Like, I guess. Like, 
Because, like, I, you know, I like to pride myself. You know, I'm a very well-traveled person, as, you know, I've flown a lot. As, yep. as we just as you, were. Yep. And, as and you several interactions. And, and so, so I wait in the line, and it's, like, the longest line ever. So I kill 10 minutes there before going, like, fuck this. I'm going to figure it out. So I literally, like, I'll go to Terminal 2. Like, maybe if I go to Terminal 2, like, I'll find where Terminal 3 is. So I follow the signs of Terminal 2, and then it turns out it's, like, Terminal two and three are here. It's like, okay, well, why didn't it? Why didn't the sign back there say that Terminal three was also here instead of saying Terminal three was here? So, because like, I guess there's a sign that says all departures. I guess Terminal three falls in under all departures. I guess. Um, go through security, pretty easy. Um, at this point, I'm like, bi- like, bitch, I'm really sick, and. <laughs> Um, I'm like, just like, they literally have everything under the fucking stars other than like ibuprofen and like, thank God in this little corner, I find medical travel and stuff like that. So I'm like, you guys have ibuprofen and they're like, yeah, like we have ibuprofen. Uh, so get my medicine. Thank God. Um, and I get to my gate. Now this is kind of one of the weirdest things I think I've ever seen like while flying. So there's not so like you guys know when you go to a gate for an airport, there's like just general seating, right? Like you can just sit in front of your gate, like, oh, I'm here, yay. Yeah. Um, so there's not like there's not that, like at least at the gate I was at. I was flying Air Canada. So you like walk up and there's like no seating, like there's just like a like the lady checking your tickets, and then there's like a bathroom where like you can sit and chill. So we're like boarding and I get to the thing lady was kind of rude. I can't lie. Uh, she's like, we don't accept electronic tickets. You must go in the in line to your left. And I was like, what? You don't, it's the same thing though. She goes, yeah, we don't accept electronic tickets. You have to go over in the left lane and print your ticket. So I'm like, so why didn't you tell me that before I w- w- wait in the thing? But I was like, whatever. So I go wait in another line to get my ticket printed. And get my ticket printed. Boop, scan. All right. But now you're, like, in this, like, room with, like, 50 seats with the people that are all on your flight. So there's, like, people standing. It's getting, like, hot, bruh. And it's, like, 30 minutes before we board. So we're all packed in there like a fucking sardines. And there's, like, one bathroom. And I have to go really bad. And you know what kind of bad I need to go. And, like, I don't go poop in public places, especially in one that is this confined. So I'm just like, oh, my God, I'm literally going to shit my britches. Like, (laughs) this is the worst. So I finally get in the plane. Dodge a bullet, bro. No one in the middle. Oh, oh, thank God. Because I am, like, I literally, like, the flight attendants are walking down getting water and stuff. I literally like, can you get me, like, can you, do you guys have any tissues? And they're like, she's like, yeah. Like, ew. Like, yeah, he's a fucking freak. So I, she brings me a whole box of tissues. But I, I tell you, bro, I went through that whole box of tissues. I went through that whole box of tissues in like eight hours. That, that middle seat that like, you know, you kind of like a, tissue city bro like it used it tissue city was there a person on the other side of that seat yeah like to the right but like you know i was using like the left side of it you know that's my side he can have the other side and he was a nice guy you know like and you know i tried to not to be sick so when he talked to me i was like oh yeah like we went to like video game tournament yeah in my my corner like you know just struggling like yeah just struggling and like you know like I hate to say it too, because like if I was flying and I wasn't sick and there was some fucker next to me sick, I'd be like, Ew, you sick piece of shit. Just stay home. <laughs> um, you know, but I have that, you know, I didn't have that, you know, so I had to fly. Uh really funny story though, um, that was like really kind of tilting for the first two hours of the flight. Dude in front of me, so like you know how like you sit, you can see in between the seats, right? So you can kind of see what the person in front of you is watching. Uh, the dude starts watching uh, the new Fast and Furious movie, okay? And then we start taxing and stuff, so he pauses the movie and, like, falls asleep. The frame he pauses at is, like, Vin Diesel 
looking at looking like directly at me like so like for the first two hours of the flight i can't help but keep like peeking over at vin diesel just like staring at me um so that was like kind of weird and then thank god he finally wakes up and restarts the movie so i'm like okay now i don't like i don't have to like fixate on vin diesel's yeah well he watches that anymore and then like I swear these people aren't real. Like, like people like this aren't real. He watches that movie and then he watches the Meg one. Like, why are you picking those right. movies, bro? Like, like who watches those movies willingly? The long flight, you know. Like, who is just... watching those willingly? Um, and this was the flight. I don't know if you guys saw my tweet about this woman on the plane. I couldn't believe it. Okay, so. If you guys want to read a book and the light and the cabin is dimmed, what is, you know, the proper etiquette to read and bring yourself some light? Oh, man, don't even get me started on people in dark ass flights late at night. So for some reason thinking, I'm going to put my little light on and read my little book and um, I'm going to fucking have a the literal sun put into my flashlight. <laughs> So, you know, you would just normally like, beep. you know, you yep, have a little yep. reading light. Wow, just a little, wow, that, just something, that, a little bit. Yeah, Use the reading clear. light that they supply to you from above yeah. that goes directly down. Yeah, this lady said no. Fuck, the, to hell with that, okay? She, okay, this is what I don't get, okay? It's fine. If you want to use this, sure, okay? Yeah, you point just it down. Do it, just do it like straight down. Point it down, down please. Please. Yeah, just like straight down, you know, that's only in your vicinity of the area. I don't know why this lady couldn't help but like read sideways. She was like reading like this. So it's literally beaming across the whole plane. So, oh, and you know me. Um, oh, I everyone know else, so The like, peak passive aggressive man so I like, love that dude So like the left The left of the plane is where I'm at She's on the far right And then there's like middle Like there's like three middle seats And I look at the middle seats Row 21 you know I fight for row 21 Um, So row you 21 I, 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 Like the one closest to her is like this Another one is like Looking like that And is like kind of you know And the dude closest to me is like You seeing this shit? And I was like, yeah, I am seeing this shit. So I start Morse coding. You know, I start going like this. You, you say those other people aren't real. I can't believe you're real. <laughs> so I start Morse coding to like her to try and like, you know, get her attention. And the, the middle row is loving it. You know, they're like, they're like they're loving it. Um, and so I finally get her attention and I go, this is like so no words this is exactly where i go i go <laughs> and then her, her she like pokes her husband and she was like and then he looks at me and goes and i went <laughs> for those Audio listeners, I was pantomiming, showing her that putting the light sideways, no good. Putting the light down, good. Yeah. And so, like, her husband's like, and I went, and then he's like, and I was like, all right. So, like, I get up, and then he's just like, so I'm like, yeah, bitch. Like, you don't want this fucking action. You don't want to be FCC. You don't want the FCC he on your want ass. Ligma. He sees you, like, you stand up. Yeah, I'm like you want He's this like, shit? Oh I'm my like, god! Yeah, because at this point, you know, it was like I had a runny nose, and it wasn't like boogies; it was like the clear shit. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, you man. got biological warfare in your hands with you, yeah. like you're smoking cannabis. It doesn't have to hurt. Upgrade to a freeze pipe today and experience smoother clouds without the throat burn, chest pain, or coughing attacks. Freeze pipe makes a unique line of freezable pipes, bubblers, bongs, and more that cool smoke by over 300 degrees. Every piece is made of thick glass and creates clouds so cold, you'll check if the bowl is even lit. The secret is the freezable glycerin chambers that come on every piece. Pop one of them into the freezer, 
for one hour and as smoke passes through, it's instantly chilled for a relaxing experience without the afterburn or coughing. You guys know that I enjoy my smoking. You may be asking yourself, what if I like to smoke joints like myself? They even make a smokable joint piece that instantly makes your joints cooler and smoother. It's literally the best. I can't even think about smoking a joint without it. American owned and with over 100,000 happy customers, Freeze Pipe is your solution to smoke like royalty without having to pay a king's ransom. Shop now at freezepipe.com and use the code GG for 10% off your entire order. That's thefreezepipe.com and code GG for 10% off. Order today to get free shipping and say goodbye to harsh smoke forever. This episode of the GG Over Easy podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and making it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. That was one of the things they harped on with me during my time with BetterHelp is doing more things that give me more enjoyment. You know, in the content space, you know, you can really stress about, you know, analytics and numbers and viewership and all that kind of stuff. Separating that was kind of hard for me. Um, And I learned through BetterHelp that, you know, unplugging the cord um, when I'm done streaming and hanging out with Sydney and the cats is something that I have to make a priority or else I'll literally just fixate on numbers and stats all the time. BetterHelp is entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Learn to make more time that makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com GG today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash GG. Thank you, BetterHelp, for sponsoring this podcast. So, um... You're so yeah, weird. that was like probably one of the craziest things I've ever seen on an airplane. Like well, just lady flashbanging well, us. Did she fix it or? Yeah, yeah, she fixed it. Okay. Yeah, she ended up like, guess what? Not needing the light at all, and just using the light above her. Um, and then everyone and... on the plane stood up and cheered. Mm-hmm. Hey, row twenty-one. Yeah, row twenty-one. Fight... Yeah, hey, I fight for row twenty-one and fight for what's fair. Um. So yeah, she ended up just like using the light. And you know, I didn't want to be I didn't want to be the guy that like kept like looking over there to make sure she was right. So I didn't look over there the whole time. So I'm sure she kept like eye and me, but you know, I wasn't paying any attention to that. Um I'm paying a lot of attention. <laughs> yeah, so we land, okay? And then this is something I normally don't do, you know? So I wait for everybody to get off. And there's a specific reason why. I have a bazillion tissues in the middle seat. And I don't want some random to have to throw that away or have a flight attendant throw that away. So I literally go over to the flight attendant. I was like, hey, can you bring like a trash bag over here? Like, I have so many tissues in here. And she's like, I'll just throw them away. I was like, no, you won't. Like, I'll do it. So I'm literally like cleaning, like literally like a whole thing. Uh, uh, yeah, again, and he had no idea you were sick. Yeah. Uh, so now I'm in Toronto. I'm in the six. Uh, I'm with Drizzy, you know, uh, get the, but like, it's one of those, man, what's the longest layover you guys have ever had? Yeah, like two hours, pretty short. Uh, I don't know, like 16, 16, damn. Yeah. Like moved completely to the next day and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought five hours was bad. Uh, That's never still mind. bad though. Yeah. And then like five hours when like. At this point, I have not slept. I didn't sleep on the plane because I felt like if I had slept on the plane, my my like whole like clock would have been out of whack. Like I would have gotten home and like not been tired. And I because I get home in Denver around 10 o'clock after like driving from the airport and stuff. Um, And so at this point, I think I had been up for like 34 hours or something like that. Um. So I'm in the Toronto airport, just like, don't fall asleep. Like, just try and be doing something. Uh, So I just go to, like, a restaurant and, like, eat. And then I I watch a guy play on his Steam Deck for two hours. I literally, like, position myself to, like, watch what he's playing. He's playing, like, that sniper marksman game where, like, you, you, like, shoot the sniper. Uh And, like, you can shoot people's balls and stuff like that. I'm trying to remember what that's called, but I uh, I know what you're talking about. Like sniper, it's I think it's like it's literally sn- there's sniper in the name. Yeah, yeah. sniper elite. Sniper elite. Just, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so I'm watching him play Sniper Elite for like three hours. Fl- playing finally boards. Um, the first like hour and a half of the flight, though, man. It was kind of sketch, yo. Like, turbulence is sketch. Like, I don't know. Like, I know turbulence, like, never has brought down a plane or anything. Like, my dad's an airline mechanic, and he always tells me, like, turbulence is actually a good thing because that's like how you know, like, you're, like, it's pushing above the plane. Like, you're keeping your forces or whatever. I hate it. My dad basically always, like, says it's, like, just driving on an unpaved road, okay? Well, apparently, over Michigan the worst storm ever so the first whole first hour and a half i'm like i'm gonna die like this is this is the way i die and you guys know i have dreams of crashing in airplanes so i was like maybe this is like the one like this is finally the one that like catches up with me um and like it was probably one of the most boring flights because like i got kind of over watching anime so i was like wait what do i watch uh so i ended up playing uh sudoku which I have nice. learned I'm not very good at um, and like don't like have the patience for. Because, uh, like, I could have told you that. Because you don't have like you, you're, the rows and the columns have to have all same different numbers, right? Or something like that. Like, well, you have to have each, one through nine. There's nine squares. Each square needs to have one through nine. And then the rows and the columns can't repeat the. Numbers. Yeah. And it was like, I got like kind of far and then like I got like stumped and I was like, I hate this. Like, why did I end up doing this? Um, <laughs> So finally land back in Denver. Uh, oh, okay. I forgot to say this. Forgot to bring the tissues that I had from the Toronto flight onto this Denver flight. Uh, and the dude, and like now it's like me and a guy are sitting next to each other. And like I'm doing my fucking best to not look sick. It's impossible. Um, my nose is running constantly and all this stuff. I hate to say this, the 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 hoodie I bought from the major oh, just no. had like streaks, dog, oh, like no. just streaks <laughs> of mucus on the sleeve. Oh. Like I got out of there, them shit, that shit was crusty, dog. Let me tell you, that shit was bad. Oh no. Um, and uh, um, so I felt like I get off in Denver. I take that hoodie off. I'm like, I gotta get this fucking disgusting like thing off of me. Um, and then drive back home. Um, I stop off at in and out to get a, to get a, a nice little double, double animal fry in me. And, Riley. um, I literally look at Sydney. I was like, I will tell you about the trip tomorrow. I was like, I want to cry. The fact I'm even home right now. Like, <laughs> like I'm so happy <laughs> to be home. I, I could cry. And so we went to bed and she was like watching a show. And I was like, what's this show about? And she said, like, she started explaining the show, and she could just see me, like, slowly, like, drifting off. <laughs> and that was my trip to uh, Germany. <laughs> yes. That sounds great. Yeah, it was, uh, it was fun. Uh, I don't think I'd ever go back to Denmark, but I would go back to Europe. Okay. I will say, Mr. Fruit and Blue Westlow, we do have a lot of fans in Denmark. I was really? actually... I was um, actually genuinely surprised about how many times I got stopped. Uh, that's awesome. Holy shit. At the venue. Uh, people from like Denmark. There was one from Norway. I think uh, there's one from Germany um, that like loved our videos, um, basically. And I was like, that's really fucking cool. Like, I, it, um, it was really weird to like have a guy in like Norway be like, Oh, love watching your guys's content, man. And like people going like, Hey, and tell Mr. Fruit, like I'm, I'm hoping he's okay. Like mentally and stuff. It was like, really, I don't know. It's like different. Like when you hear it here in America, but when you go to a completely different like world and they like still like know of what you do and stuff, it was like really cool and really humbling. It was, it was awesome. Um, so yeah, that was my uh, trip to Denmark. Okay. Well, we didn't give any updates, so if you want to briefly let people know beforehand when you couldn't make the other podcast because you were dying. Yeah, uh, so that was my trip to Denmark. This is my trip to the Urgent the Care. The prequel. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, like, two weeks ago, as you guys know, I don't go to the hospital. I don't go to the doctor because guess what? You go to the doctor, they're like, hey, you have heart disease, and then you die in two weeks Like, because that's just how it works. Um, I... I forget what, what I was doing. I must have gotten done doing something. I think we like got done doing Pokemon or something like that. 
and I was chilling the rest of the day. And like right before I got in the shower, I just like got hit with like a thing of like being like nauseous and stuff like that. I was like, oh, like that's really weird. And I take a shower, I come out, I'm like, ooh, I'm like even more nauseous. And the Sydney's like, well, have you eaten today? I'm like, no. And it's like at this point, it's like six, seven o'clock. She's like, okay, well, eat this Chick fil A I just got you. Oh, hell yeah. I love Chick fil A. Eat the Chick fil A. I'm even more nauseous now. I said, I'm trying to keep it down. I can't keep it down. I run upstairs, start throwing up. Okay, this is the part that was like kind of scary. So I threw up all the food, okay? All food, okay? Yeah. All food has been gone. It is like the fries, the chicken, the patty, or the bun, whatever it is called. We don't need to know. Yeah, no, we get it. So that's all thrown up. And I still feel nauseous. So I give it one more, like, whoo, blood. Like, and like, not mm-hmm. like... And like it's not like because like I've thrown up like blood before, but it's always like these like little streaks of like blood. This was like yeah, that's a lot of blood. Like that is like not okay. <laughs> and I'm just like as, as soon as I see that, I'm like, oh shit, dog, you have cancer. Like you're dying. <laughs> like that is literally like that is literally like what I think. I like oh is my it? god, like you have heart disease. Um, so I'm like Sydney, and she like. <laughs> Runs upstairs and I was like, I just threw up blood. She's like, You did? And I was like, Yeah, look. And then I like just do it again, like just try and throw up. And I throw up more blood. And she's like, We need to go to urgent care. And I was like, All right, fine. Like, <laughs> and like, cause like I literally thought I was dying. Can finally get you there. Yeah, I was like, I f- I'm dying. So go to urgent care. Uh, dude tells me that I have like a, a, a viral thing that's going around apparently that's making people nauseous and he equates it to like just throwing up really hard and I don't know I like had thrown up and I got to urgent care at like 530 they probably closed at 6 so it almost seemed they were like yeah it's a it's a yeah just get it done. <laughs> Um, so like they, they prescribed me like, um, some like, uh, uh, nausea medicine. So I go to Walgreens. Okay. Now this is another whole kind of story. So I walk into Walgreens, get to the front, get to where the pharmacy is still a little open. And, um, dude. So like I walk up and all of a sudden I'm like, Hey, like I have a thing. Boom. Just closes the gate right in front of my face. I was like, what? <laughs> doesn't, do, like, doesn't say, like, hey, we're closing. Like, oh, sorry. Like, we, like, this takes longer than, like, the thing. Like, hey, we're, like, clo- we close at 7. It's, like, 6.59. We're, like, prepping to close. Just slams the gate in my face. And I'm like, bitch, you did not just do that. Like, like, I just went to urgent care and spent a lot of money. And now I'm about to spend a lot of money on this stupid fucking pill that I probably don't even need. Like, I'm pissed. So like it reminds I like, me of uh, SpongeBob when he was in the yeah it do, the whatever. exactly <laughs> like that it was exactly like that uh, so like they're like closing the gates and I literally just like put like the thing on the window that they're like walking around and she goes I was like yeah no shit but just tell me that like instead of closing shit in my face so. Now I'm walking out of Walgreens making a scene. Just going like, man, fuck this you place. Like making a scene. Yeah, no. I went, man, I literally man, man, fuck this. Like and I like as I'm God, walking out, man. I, I, I look at the thing and I was like, hey, your pharmacy people are fucking assholes. And I just like walk out. I could never then, be in public. And then I get I home, think. get on the phone with Walgreens. Uh like, hey, like, like the branches, like, like hey, you no, need not, to know. Not the branch. I call the Walgreens. I go, I need to talk to a manager. She goes, okay, yeah, yeah, like one minute. So, hey, this is the, the manager. I went, what the fuck do you guys think you're doing these days? He goes, excuse me? I went, I just went in there and I got, I got fucking the gate closed in my fucking face. Who the fuck do you guys think you are? He goes, are you just going to keep cursing at me? I went, yeah, the fuck I am. And you're going to fucking listen to what I have to say. But then, like, I start bitching. And I know he's doing the thing where he's just, like, holding the phone away from his ear. Because then, like, I get dumb bitching. And then it's not, like, for another five seconds. He goes, all right, is there anything else that I can help you with? 
I went, you're not even fucking listening to me, you dickhead. And then I'm, oh, I'm just going off. Like, I'm just like, man, fu-. I'm like, what if I was a little fucking kid that actually needed this fucking medicine? I was like, you're lucky it's some bullshit nausea medicine that I don't fucking need. Hang up. Uh, then I make the tweet about, like, my experience at Walgreens. Walgreens DMs me, asks me for the store branch and everything. And then, like, a day later, they called me and were like, Hey, like, uh, like what happened? I explained what happened. They're like, well, we want to give like Walgreens credits to your account. And I was like, I'm not doing this for Walgreens credits. I don't want Walgreens credits. I just want you guys to know this place fucking sucks. That's literally like what I said. So I go in the next day. Cindy's like, Lord. I'll pick up your medicine. I went, no, you won't. I'm going in. And she's like, Robert, please just let me pick I up the medicine. I think that's a better for- idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Cindy's Sydney, like, go. please let me bu- like get the medicine for you. I went, nope. So I went and picked up the medicine myself. So I get there, I'm like, hey, like, I'm here, like, and so I'm fucking looking for, like, faces that I recognize, bro, my, I, I'm, like, looking, don't You're recognize anyone, because, like, I'm, not, I, I'm gonna walk in and raise hell, okay, like, I'm looking for the, the, the pharmacist that was on time, the dude who had brown hair and a brown beard, kind of looked like you, maybe it was you, uh, and, like, it's i don't see any of them it's a it's a man pharmacist and like a, a little woman w- working the counter well, so i'm God. like yeah i was like all right so i get there i was like look i'm gonna be honest with you i was gonna raise hell about what happened to me yesterday she went oh are you the one that the gate got closed in front of and i went i am yeah i am they probably told crazy stories the the pharmacist like walks up and he goes hey man like i don't know who like did that we don't have any like male techs that like work here he goes it might have been somebody who like works for the branch or something or like works just for the store and was closing it up he's like but like that is like not what we do and i was like well thank you like that's fine like but just know i'm coming for that fucker's head that's literally what i said um so they're like, yeah, it'll take like 15 minutes. I went like, cool, no problem. So they're in that 15, <laughs> they're in that 15 minutes. I literally just walk around the store looking for the guy. Couldn't find him. Probably wasn't on that. Probably wasn't on that day. You are so petty. That's yeah, insane. petty white is what they call me. Uh, so like just looking uh, around, trying to find <laughs> no side of the guy. Uh, the next day. We don't feel really great about like what like the urgent care told us because it seemed like they were kind of just pushing us out. Uh, so we go to urgent care, like the hospital hospital or the ER, I guess that's what they call it. Um, and they ended up telling us about the same thing. Uh, they told me that I had like ruptured or like tore something in my esophagus like pretty badly because uh, he like asked for pictures. And I guess like if you're bleeding from your stomach, your blood is like a burgundy color. Like, if it comes from your stomach, like, from a stomach ulcer or something like that. But if it's, like, a normal kind of looking blood, it's coming from, like, your throat or, like, your esophagus. So I paid $600 to hear, like, what I already known. Uh, uh, shout out to, uh, shout out healthcare. Um, so, yeah, I just kind of had, like, I don't, yeah, I, like, stopped smoking, I guess, basically for about two and a half weeks until, like, yesterday to kind of, like, you know, let my shit get back to, back to goodness um so yeah the like the next day after that we were supposed to podcast and wmd guy here was like yo like i got cancer for like, I, don't think, I don't think i can make this shit like i'm gonna be honest with you <laughs> so uh we took a week off of the podcast uh because of my soft throat so apologies for my soft throat and my outburst at walgreens does that make me a karen or is that like a valid reason 100%, to be pissed? You're a yeah, no way. 100%. that's a valid reason. That's not like it's, people are playing at the park. Like, be, quit playing at the park. Like, that's a it valid might be reason. valid. It may be a valid reason to be upset. You took it so far, but the fact, you, yeah, the fact you took it so far is what solidifies you as a Karen. All right, well, I'm a Karen. Would right, would the would the flashlight arch- also be Karen? No, that was just funny. Yeah, okay, cool. I just wouldn't have done that. I mean, like what she was doing was uncalled for. Your your level of passive aggressiveness is like should be studied, I, I, dude. I can only like, I can only hope. <laughs> I, like Rob is just the worst type of person when it comes to passive aggressiveness, but that's exactly why I love watching it. It's it's a lot of my dad, you know, a lot of seeing my dad and the things that he did and got away with. Uh, Rob is just, just the Rob is just wild. the anything happens, 
anyone does anything infuriating to him, he's just like, well, I guess and I'll you, go fuck myself as loud as possible. And like, I have a bigger buff <laughs> than my dad because my dad is like brown and looks Colombian and like I'm white. So, like, oh, you know, and I with even, you, yeah, you can get away yeah, with way more. Yeah, yeah, like I'm like, I'm like the ultra instinct version of him, you know? See, like, see, like with brown people, it's like it instills fear in them, not in the good way because they're racist, but with you, it's just people are just yeah. like, ooh, um. Oh my! Oh, I'm so. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry I'm that so, happened to you. Like, we'll oh give you sorry. some more fries. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, dude. Hey, when you got oh, it, use it. I respect dude. that. Oh, yeah. my God. So sorry taking about the first hour of the podcast explaining. Uh, okay, my I whole... just died of secondhand embarrassment that entire. Yeah, hour. that yeah, was. Guys, you guys. And just picturing myself being there, even around that, and I'm just like. Like I'd be walking with you, like I don't know who this guy is. I, I swear, <laughs> like we're not. <laughs> yeah, and you know it's... what? I, I respect that you are just so unapologetically you. See, see, I that's the that thing, though. See, that's the thing, though. When Rob, when you do right by Rob, <laughs> he is unapologetically kind to you. He's like, "Oh, dude, no problem. Oh, dude, you're the best." He's like, "That dude will gas you up." But if you are even the slightest, him. you cross that man, it's a flip. This dude turns into something else. Oh. What a f- he's a freak of nature, and I respect that man. Appreciate you, boys. I'm glad we didn't lose you to Denmark. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm glad you guys know that that's Denmark now. <laughs> okay, I'll keep that in mind. Um, I'm glad I didn't think that was Germany, although I still hate Germany. Uh, just for my one interaction. Sydney and I are actually going to Germany for our honeymoon. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, what are you guys doing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're going to go tour. We're going to go through Munich. Um, and then we're also going to uh, stay with some friends in Munich. And then uh, go to a hotel that's kind of like in Austria, like in the Swiss Alps, kind of because I guess Munich is very close to that. Um, and stay in like a little mountain resort stuff. It's going to be sweet. Sounds nice. Yeah, very excited about it. We're gonna tour be, like a lot of cool, like World War II kind of like history stuff because I'm super like interested by World War II and stuff. Um, Claire tried to surprise me, bless her heart. Um, turned the big three zero this year. Um, how's your back uh, feeling? <laughs> as always, terrible. Um, and so she wanted to. She was like. For your 30th or something, you know, I want to do something, but also because of my surgery and recovery. He's like, oh, I thought we'd like plan a trip. Um, he's like, Do you like trust me to just like plan it? Like, do you need to know? And I'm like, Yeah, it's fine. Surprise me. Like, I trust Ooh. you. And she's like, Cool. I was thinking like end of October, maybe early November, because like it's long enough away that you'll be recovered and all that sort of stuff and everything. I'm like, Yeah, yeah. And immediately I go, It's London. <laughs> I, I immediately think to myself, It's London. Why is that? And well, I'll get to that. And so she's going throughout or something. She's talking like we're going to bed that night. She's like, oh, I'm so excited about it. And like, oh, I think you're going to love the trip. And I forget why or something. She's like, you'll never guess or something. I'm like, I think, oh, I well, know. that's just opening Pandora's box, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. like, and I'm like, well, I think I already know. And she goes, no, you don't. I look up something on my phone. And he goes, it's London, isn't it? She goes, how'd you know? And I realized she's taking me to the league world finals this year. That's sick. And that's why I immediately knew. Because she's like, end of October, uh, traveling. Because that's the other thing is she says, trust me. So she's not going to throw me in some crazy foreign country. Yeah. And I'm like, where is like something reasonable? End of October. And the thing is, all of her reasoning was sound. It was a good excuse. But I was yeah. going, mm. snuff that out immediately. And then she's like, all right, well, now that you know... Um, but yeah, so we'll be going to London late October, I guess. Um, it'll be like a week outside. That'd be sick. Of, uh, well, yeah, she finals, she had so. messaged me about it, uh, and she had told me it was going to be a surprise. I said, "Good luck," because you try. Um, I'll try. I'll try. Um, because she she wants to, like to I think all the squad to come through and stuff. So I will try uh, to see if. Because it's like right, because I think I get back from Munich sometime at the end of September, so uh, I'll see if I can manage that. It'd be sick. I would love to go too. Um, 
the uh, it's just the world the, finals though right like they only do like yeah. one it's like it, the finals day yeah because then semi-finals like the weekend before that's the one thing i miss about like iem and stuff um and the way like csgo majors do it it's all just like a week of bam, yeah. bam, bam 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 but with the world it's like globe trotting or whatever so it's like Group stage here, next week group stage somewhere else, next week quarterfinals yeah. somewhere else. Because like if you want to see those, you else. you gotta like chase it or like you gotta follow it around. And that's what I really did enjoy about like Counter Strike. It was like the top eight you get but that is what is kind of cool, like with groups and stuff like that, you do get to see that. Like you don't get to see that with Counter Strike. With Counter Strike, it's like you only get to see the top eight quarterfinals, semifinals, finals. Uh, uh like with league you get to see like groups if you want to go to the group stage games you get to see i think even you get to see playing games um and that's what i think would be really cool is to see like the playing games and all that kind of stuff um the what's it called? oh the the one nice thing though is uh i won't be surrounded by people that don't speak my language yeah you'll, so you'll be know a pretty low barrier of entry yeah, yeah. you'll you go know. to fucking london yeah, with your bruvs. Well, I always, I always wanted to go to like, like a world championship somewhere else. Or like, there was one year in Paris that like she wanted to go, or like South Korea. But then the problem too is, and I noticed it's nice they did in Denmark. I wonder why. There must be a reason, probably because of just like all the different nationalities have there. But if you go to certain countries, you'd go to the cast, and then the cast is not in English. So I'd be sitting yeah. there, and I'm there, and I'm watching, but also it's like. I have no well, in, but I saw like in Denmark it was English and it well in uh when it was in Paris in the in the stadium it was French. So that was like what would really kind of suck. I, I I I'm interested to know why it was English too in Copenhagen, but it's probably because I'm just wondering like if it's the they're assuming all the people come from different countries and the most common denominator maybe it's just English. Yeah. Know. Um well because like I don't know, like maybe because a lot of like international teams use English comms, so like the barrier to entry, like or like to know what's happening, you don't really need to understand the language, kind of too, I guess. Um, with league, it's kind of a little bit more different. You need you need a little bit more in depth and more nuance. Yeah, um, but that's sick, dude. Uh, this will be like you've never been to a finals, right? Uh, it'll be my second. I went to World's Finals in twenty sixteen. And that was the Ash Arrow, right? That was semifinals. Oh, okay. The Ash Arrow. Um, that was Pog. But then we saw the finals. Um, I think finals is where they... It was... No, you might... It's one or the other. Semifinals is when they pulled out Misfortune support for the first time. And then there was the Ash support for the first time with the whole... And I don't remember, It was... One of those was during semifinals and one of those was during finals. That's when Corey and I lost our minds. Was the finals again, close said, that you went to, or no? Oh yeah, game five was great. Oh, that's sick. Okay, like um, SKT ended up getting uh, upset, losing game five. Was oh, is that when we got Faker faking, yeah, Faker crying? Um, that was sad. Because until that point, he'd won like what three worlds in a row or whatever. It's like his first time not winning worlds, something like that. Um, yeah, so I'm excited for that. And that reminds me, that's probably traveling. Um, speaking of traveling, I traveled to the movie theaters. Oh, recently. you traveled to yeah. there. I've Took seen one, three steps, uh, four, <laughs> uh, both Kong and Monkey Man. I saw Monkey Man last night. Kong and Monkey um, Man. Yeah. Just leaving Godzilla well, people out are like saying, that. <laughs> people, well, because people were saying like last year there was like the brand, you know, whatever. Uh, of like Barbenheimer or whatever and all the thing and they're like saying this year is the year year of the apes like year of the the monkeys and it's Kong Planet of the Apes Monkey Man oh <laughs> lots of monkey I forgot that there's like that new Monkey Man like badass yeah movie that's what with uh, Dave Patel oh okay I yeah. see what you're doing there that's what I saw last night you double called... featured yeah. well no I saw Kong last week Oh, okay. Um, and Kong, Godzilla, Kong, whatever the name is. I don't know. Yeah. Um, it was good. It was just like, 
the it i feel like they understood what i wanted the yeah. humans were there just to move the plot along to see more monsters fighting do we get like more monsters of, than like we did in previous kind of ones we definitely get more kong um i think godzilla has they like i'm the screen time it still has like roughly the same well, he's an oscar winning he actor you know like exactly he's they don't have the budget for that yeah um it's funny though the director or whatever this movie said i don't know if you guys saw that that um godzilla's new form or like color and stuff was inspired by goku's kaioken i did see that really yeah cool. um but yeah it's just like it, it's dumb fun well, that's like what, like, you know, Godzilla can be serious, like with Godzilla minus one, but then, like, sometimes I just want to see Godzilla suplex a fucking crab, you know? Like, is that, is that, is that wrong to see? Like, like, I can love both, you know? I knew I was in for a trip when early on, and you've probably seen the gif of it at this point. Uh huh. King Kong picks up a little baby orangutan. Yeah. And then just starts whacking people with the baby and yeets the baby. And I'm like, this is great. This you know is... what I heard? I heard that the little monkey he's like tossing around like that is the same size that Kong is in the first Skull Island movie. Apparently, mm, it's I like it makes that. this. I mean, it's it's big, like, but well, that's what it's like. It's even funnier when like you hear that that monkey is the size of Kong in the first Skull Island. When you don't, a lot of it, the fights you don't have the scale of something next to them. So like, yeah. it looks just like a child and the monkey, but of course they're giant. Um, but it's just so much. It's, it's funny parts. It, like I didn't take it seriously, and yeah. it's almost like, like Transformers. You know, yeah. it was like just a fun exploding yeah. monster destroying a city movie. Yeah, no complaints. What, like I went to go see. Stupid. I love it. Yeah, I went to go see some monsters fight, and the human plot was kind of like yeah, yeah, but. It literally just served, and I won't like spoil anything, but served for more monsters and like sweet. Yeah, so, so yeah. I was gonna say, and did the ending open up like a, a but another body cop movie with Godzilla and Kong? I don't know. This one actually didn't have any like after credits. Okay. Um, I mean, I'd be shocked if they don't, because like so far it seems like this one's already doing sold. Than I think they thought. Yep, just hotcakes. And hopefully like that's just what they realize is like with these kind like i like the different kind of monster movies like minus one or like the godzilla that this one originated from which is crazy to think that it's technically so but like in 2012 or whatever with the red flares 2014 like, i think 14 14 yeah, maybe 2014 or like you get the movies where it's still sort of like oh and like part of yeah. the story is it's not just like monster blah 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 there's the tens or like minus one you put but then there's also movies like this where i just want it's just, i just want to see them doing stupid things dude people are like there's this weird discourse too where people are like you guys should expect better like minus one like you can't like you can't no you can't have both expect better i'm just like mm, watch us watch us fucking <laughs> watch, watch, watch us Godzilla. watch us Watch us dump money into both. Like it's pretty easy I to do so. I just want to see Godzilla run up and just arcade like boom, like you know. Yeah, like it's funny because I I think I've I think I've talked about this in a podcast before, but it's funny how like before it really it started with Japan doing you know Godzilla serious like whoa like this is an allegory for for nuclear war and like yeah aftermath of it and then quickly just turns into just act stupid action thrillers giant robot thing fighting god giant yeah thing. <laughs> godzilla has a kid now and yeah. like him and his kid are going into battle together and then america is like lame watch this makes the worst most serious godzilla movies and how quickly like it's flipped the it's tone flipped of yeah it's flipped again where japan's like all right, let's you know like let's go back to let's go back to like scary zilla let's go back to like you know what what godzilla really means to humanity and united states usa is just like yo we'll be it'd be so Double fucking done. sick it'd be so if fucking he picks up this baby orangutan and throws Dude, him around like a weapon if this giant monkey drop kicked a motherfucker would that not be the sickest Dude, if Godzilla shot, sh sh just like pull out a Glock and started shooting all the time, would that not be the sickest? And we're like, peak cinema, baby. I cinema. Saw like, uh, the, 
the director basically they had a they had a scene where like they were trying to figure out like Godzilla walking and stuff like that. And I guess they had watched minus one and like when Godzilla's like force of his thing, like forces up the rocks and stuff like that. They were like, that's what we need to like have in our movie. So it's cool to see like Godzilla, you know, if I like my, my childhood heroes, other than master chief, rest in peace, master chief, Godzilla, you get it done dirty. Godzilla, Godzilla and Sonic right now are eaten. You know what I mean? Like it's so, it's just nice having, movies that know why we love them and they aren't trying to like they're trying to be something like different than like what people love like there's there's great ways to put spin on things like obviously minus one is like hey like let's really let's really nail down the you know godzilla as a symbol but like that's like they still like that is godzilla like at his most serious he's a symbol of things that are happening in our real world versus like american godzilla godzilla 2000 where it's like oh he's in new york and (laughs) everything is not saturated um serious and it's just like like, godzilla has eggs and stuff yeah it's a weird movie yeah it's just nice to to see like it's just nice to have both it's just nice to have a godzilla that really that really like is grounded in reality and then also have godzilla where he you know is turning shows pink. up sure shows up with yeah. with his pink uh goku black super saiyan rose and just starts you know just starts shooting people like that's hell I'm yeah sure it literally reminds me of that of like people are like dragon ball is actually not that good of an anime and like it's dumb and like this story doesn't really make sense and i'm like bro, and like my brother goku Christ. got a new color hair bro let's go <laughs> like i don't yeah, y'all are acting like y'all are acting like this new Godzilla form is not a straight up dude. Super Saiyan Rose was sick. Let's do that. And that's why it's like I think it makes it better because you're able to serve both. Somebody's like, oh well, I want. Right, well, you, just you got, can't like, have one. both. It's like, like I I'm gonna spend money on both, dude. Like we can't yeah, have both, baby. Watch this. And like what this one, it? I was going in expecting dumb monster action, and I got dumb monster <laughs> action. What did you? Great. I'm curious. What did you think of Monkey Man? Because like it's almost kind of like a John Wick type of movie, right? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't like because I'd also just rewatched John Wick four this last week with Claire. I like would go in with expectations. It's definitely more like John Wick first, or like things aren't established and like there's not as much action. Mm-hmm. There are action sequences, but like the bulk of the movie isn't. Um. And like the the only comparisons I would draw to, to John Wick are like this one guy who is trying to accomplish some goal, and it's like him against the world, and a lot of cool action scenes. But that like story wise and stuff, aside from any of that, like it doesn't really, it's not the same. Um, but I really liked it. It was it was like the perfect length too. It's only like two hours and one minute or something. Okay, it, like it didn't go on too long. Um, and it seems like a one-off. I don't think they're like trying to make it a sequel or something, but he did a really good job. The action sequences were really cool, especially some of like the later ones. Um, and yeah, I just went in like wanting like John Wick esque on action movie. Um, and it's even more serious. And then in the middle, like I said, like it's much slower paced, but, uh, yeah, as a whole, I, I really liked it. Nice. Well, I'm definitely going to be seeing King Kong and, and Godzilla here as soon as I can. Uh, anything expect- else we want to touch on before we uh, go to Q&A? Uh, Doom Messiah is confirmed. Hog. It's fine. That- it's officially in production. Okay. That's the third one. It'll be the end of the trilogy. Um, But up until that point, he'd said he'd wanted to and like, oh, if we do it, but but now it's officially um, in the books, which legendary, the people who published or whatever, Dune and King Kong Godzilla right now are eaten back to back huge releases. And um, T- Timothy Chalamet or whatever uh, actually broke a record John Travolta set back in like the late 60s or early 70s or something of being the main actor who had the two biggest box office openings, or whatever, in like a, a span of like eight months or a year or whatever. Is it Wonka or something? Yeah, Wonka to Dune. 
Um, yeah, that movie's so, not for me. You didn't see Wonka? No, I, I I'm not a musical. Like I, <laughs> if, as soon as it's like, welcome to our candy store, isn't it great? I will I'm like, say, I'm, I'm I didn't here. know it was going to be a musical, as much as it was. Like I sat down, started it. And the first thing is on a boat singing a song. And I'm like, oh, what have I got myself in? I'm out. Yeah, like. But then it, it honestly wasn't that bad. Um, and overall, it was it was an okay movie. Um, it was good. It wasn't great. I know a lot of people loved it. But for me, like, I'm with you. Musical stuff doesn't really do it for me. So it was already working uphill. Yeah. For me, it's it's just him. Like, I just can't take mr chalamet seriously the only exception is dune where he's a murder twink and he's just (laughs) like dude have you seen um... i'm so mad all the time and it works for him but like any other serious role or any other role where he's like trying his best i'm just like dude just like have you seen negative negative riz negative riz no i i would say watch the king um i think it's like the netflix one where he plays it's like medieval I think outside of Dune, that's one where I think you might watch him be like, that, that, he did well in that one. Fair. Fair. Um, but, I mean, the man is clearly selling tickets now. And hey, he's uh, big I roles and can't be mad. And he's young. And he's got a long career ahead of him. So, good for him. Um, otherwise, yeah, nothing like huge. Um, you guys may have to update me on q and Do you guys do, did you guys do Q&A oh, while I was right. gone? I got you. I deleted We are current. So the, oh, okay, high, cool. the one at the top is the newest. Okay, cool. Uh, Esquire uh, says, question for Mr. Fruit. And this is kind of a good thing because I know you would kind of want to talk about it. Is there any chance that your Elden Ring streams will be turned into videos, either uploaded or uncut? Uh, how did you enjoy it? Uh, the Elden Ring as a whole started working on the edited video. It'll go on the main channel. The whole playthrough as a whole... We'll eventually go up on Mr. Fruit Uncut. I don't know how. Figure it out because 60 hours. So slowly chip away at it. Because first I'm going to upload the Power World 100 days, which is going to be two like 12 hour uploads. I think it's the max I can do a YouTube video. The Elden Ring will be all like five 12 hour episodes, I guess. Um, come eventually. And then the main video as well. And as a whole, I really liked it. Uh, did I say I loved it? And the saddest part is that I'll never be able to experience that again. Oh, uh, yeah. Did you like Sekiro more? Uh, I did combat-wise. It just ties me a little bit better. But everything else, Elden Ring takes. Uh, Elden Ring is just so special. It is like a game of, like, ambition. Like, at every at every turn, you have to respect, like, damn, like... <sighs> Like it's, we're gonna be seeing games ripping this off for for the next decade easily, if not more. It's just I, so the breadth and scale of what it does is just. Oof. Well, that's the thing is it's huge, but also so deep. Like, yeah, it really feels like any space is unused. And like, that it's I'm so dense. And, yeah, there's always something, or it's great. And I know even as I finish, there's still bosses I missed. Well, and that's the oh, thing yeah. I did it blind. Oh, yeah. So I missed like every quest line. None of those are obvious or like. Yeah, the quest line. The quests in that game are do that. Yeah, or, like, and every Souls game is like that. It was like spoilers. Um, I don't want to talk to, but like, I burnt the tree. Uh, Hell yeah! Back, and since I didn't do any quests, everyone's dead. I'm like, hmm, I probably could have avoided this. Whoops! Whatever. And I know there's like different endings and stuff. Um, I got the maidenless one apparently. Uh, maidenless. Oh yeah. yeah. Hey. No bitches. We started, no I remember my roots. Um, uh, yeah. I'm glad you had fun. Incredible game. Yeah. Uh, Fire uh, says, "What are y'all's uh, top five favorite uh, moments from Dragon Ball? We'll just have your favorite moment. Let's just keep it." Ooh, fudge. For me, uh, when I was a kid, and I saw, I, I know it is not a fan favorite. I think a lot of people actually hate it the most. Uh, Super Saiyan three, uh, for me, was like one of the. the I'd say coolest. that's a pretty. I wouldn't say a that's a hot take. A lot of people hate that all. transformation. A lot of people hate that transformation. Mm. It's not my favorite. 
I don't think it's I, hated. I, I think it is memed on. I hate but how it's, it's skated over now. It's as if it doesn't exist. <laughs> that's that's so true. Because they just go from one to two to one God. Two. God, yeah. Just, that <laughs> three. Super Saiyan three. Mm, that was. And I love Super Saiyan three. Like I thought he looked so cool. Like I, no eyebrows. I'm down. Like I don't. No, no I don't brows. think that's a big deal. Uh, my favorite moment. Um, I don't know. I'll just name the two off my head. It's the, it's probably a, one of these. Uh, obviously the first time Goku goes Super Saiyan against Frieza. I would agree. Yes. Sick. Especially oh at the time, God. not knowing about any of that. And then also, like, at the time, for the first time when he's doing it, just like the energy and the spark and the world falling apart just from his like, bow and stuff. It's so sick. That or um, Cell Fight, especially the ending. But, like, pretty much any style thing. I love that saga. Okay. I have a top three because I can't, it's impossible to pick between these three. One. Teen Gohan go Super Saiyan 2. Oh, oh, yeah, that's what? my favorite part of that song. Well, Gohan sure. surpasses his father and becomes the protector of Earth. And the father-son Unfortunately, Kamehameha. Japan the hated father, that. The father-son Kamehameha. Yeah, what? Like... Yeah, now Japan is reeling it back like, oh, man, we wish Gohan was cool Not again. Not Goku. Yeah. 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 Look what you guys Why does Gohan have yeah. glasses? Yeah, <laughs> now this is what you get. But, dude. That's the yeah. domesticated. The father son Kamehameha, what an iconic cultural so a culture um, a cultural moment in 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 old Gen Z early millennial history. A cultural reset, dare I say. So Second sweet. one, Majin Vegeta sacrifices himself for wow. uh well, for knows. humanity, but really for his son and his wife. And I'm just like, damn. That's my goat, Vegeta. Vegeta, just the irredeemable piece of shit, genocidal freak. Finally yeah, comes to terms. Literally, has committed so many. Finally comes to terms. Holy shit! This is what I want to be. Becomes the man that he always knew he could be. Ascends beyond, not just the Super Saiyan form, but finally becomes a man with responsibilities realizes fuck i do love my kid i do love my wife this place is worth fighting for damn it and then number three these are all in not in like ordered by the way right never before have i been transported into my childhood body instantly than when at the end of the tournament of power goku fights with frieza and Android, uh, Android seventeen. That was so sick. Years and years like and cheese. years. Cheesing so hard when that happened. Years, I yes, cheese. That's it. Like I'm just sitting there smiling. I I'm, I I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a fucking ten year old boy sitting in my chair, going like, holy shit, Goku. <laughs> fighting with the villains that he has has he has gotten through to over these years why the fuck and 17 it was like yeah 17 we kind of already knew he got through to him but like with frieza like they hate each other still but even frieza's like this is our universe motherfucker and you're not taking it and they just start fighting together and i'm shitting my little pants my i Everyone in that moment was Vegeta. When Vegeta's like, "What the fuck?" and I lose my shit. I that I don't know if I'm ever gonna have a, a moment that I cheese as hard as as when I was watching that. An honorable mention for me because I haven't technically seen it. I've only heard it because I haven't gone back and watched uh, the English dub because I think. When I was watching it, English dub, it stopped right after like the first Frieza return, Golden Frieza. But I've heard the speech Vegeta gives during the tournament of power to Goku and Ultra Instinct. Chills. It's so good. I got to like, yeah. pass in the domain of the gods. That entire speech. I'm like, I got to rewatch. I got to. Yeah, I got to rewatch. Okay. Also honorable mention for me. 
at the very end apologize. sorry sorry yeah, no, dude I mean, dragon ball's peak dude at the very end i just think you guys uh, would be able to think of things but he dude we could go dude we could you were like you know, just do a top one brother in christ we could easily do a top five if not more if you let us have a whole podcast we could have a whole podcast about dragon ball right we could have we like a couple dragon ball, we could have a couple of podcasts about dragon ball all right Game like force. Could, uh oh, so peak <laughs> so peak uh anyways okay honorable mention because um it was just so fucking sick uh, and really showed how dire the tournament of power and like how hard people were fighting is when like the final clash go Goku is like flickering between base and super saiyan. Cause he just drained. Mm-hmm. I was like, that is so fucking sick. God damn. I love dragon ball. Anyways, that, that's it. We're done. Uh, stop. I'm done. I can't. All right, I can honorable mention for me, just the whole Broly movie as well. Oh, like, oh as soon one? as they like, oh, right so when they start good. getting down oh, to the end, like that's the that, movie. That's yeah. <laughs> oh. Which okay, which by the way, when we watched it, we we're just like, it's even better than we remember, and we're like, Dada, what'd you think? He was like, there was like no story exposition, like yeah. they fought for way too long, and we we're just like, you just don't get it. He, yeah, you, you just don't get it. You just don't get it. You just don't get it. That's why we're here. Uh, last question here from Kara. Uh, with Dune Tune taking everyone by storm, what is your f- guys' favorite and least favorite moment? Character and production area, sound, score, costume, etc. of the film. Uh, I'll admit it. I saw this in IMAX. I fell asleep for the first, like, 35 minutes the second time I saw it. <laughs> the, the, the first 45 minutes of that movie is so boring. Like, I will say it. Like, as su- once it hits, like, the Arrakis planet... The movie like it, it, boom like it explodes and how sick it is the first 45 minutes of him becoming like it's still the rat, like nah I, like which is crazy because that's what everyone says about the first and you like the first more oh i love the first one i like the first one i think more than i like the second one huh? that's a take i don't agree yeah. but um my least favorite moment all right, I'm gonna say it. The casting of Christopher Walken, man. I just I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I don't know. Uh, we go to the Emperor of all this stuff, and it's wow, Christopher Walken. I'm like, I can't because he's I like, I can't it's... separate this man. Like, this well, is... that's what I mean. He's just Christopher Walken. Yeah, no yeah he's what, Christopher he's... Walken. <laughs> oh. So I was like, I... I mean, I get it. Like, you know, he's this like all-powerful figure but it's also the point is like he's still just a guy but like christopher walken really that was probably my least favorite most favorite i don't know there's a bunch but like the score alone seen in imax oh um, uh, yeah the score and sound effects oh so good i think my favorite thing is when like he's like walking into the they're about to like battle the emperor or whatever and that sand he's like in like the black coat or whatever mm-hmm. and the sandworm comes like behind him like that oh. that is sick or when um like especially when the sound it was when i don't want to spoil anything but like he goes into that giant cavern where all the people are waiting to hear him yeah and he speaks that first time and um it like bellows throughout the entire mm-hmm. place goosebumps what about you, uh probably i think for me I mean, there's a lot of things, but I think it's probably the soundtrack. I think that is like something I still go back to regularly. Ah, I love, I mean, again, there's so many good things. There's so many great things, but I think the soundtrack is like the peak for me. Um, I will say my least favorite thing, which really isn't like, it's not that it's like the worst. It doesn't it, like, not, it's not the point where it takes me out, but like, I definitely notice it. It's something a lot of people really like <laughs> for some reason. It's there's way, especially in two, especially in Dune 2, there's way too many eye smoldering shots. There's way oh. too many looking off in the distance. <gasps> oh God. Like, 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 look at just looking in the cast. distance, just looking <laughs> in the distance, like, like, just the too many i just really act with your eyes looks into the distance <laughs> like oh my god there's way too many way too many I, looking off in the distance eyes smoldering Ugh, i can't believe this is happening shots yeah way way too many anime <laughs> this is 
the power of uh, I can't believe this. It doesn't work as good in live action as it does in anime. Okay, uh, still not bad. Just I'm just like man, like again. Uh, well, that'll do it uh, for this episode of the GG Over Easy podcast. It's nice to have everybody back. It's good to be back. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of me being a Karen in Europe. <laughs> uh, we'll catch you guys uh, next week for some more talking. Peace out. See. <laughs>